you for tuning us in because you are the ones that have made us number one in Cincinnati. And here we are in Amelia at Holly Lane's. Glenn Schmidt, the fine BPA owner here. And of course, Wayne Piles, who does a great job of managing out here. Lanes 9 and 10 is where the competition will take place today. And uh, we've got uh, a couple of contrasting styles. We've got a, a smooth, smooth roller in Dwayne, and uh, then we've got the maximum crank, hit, release, pull, devastating ball, Brian Himmler. Reminiscent of the first time he was on the show, Jen. A couple of first shots, a little, a little stiff, but... Uh, no doubt about the fact he straightens it out. <laughs> once he loosens up. Yeah, that's right. 250 for the show so far this year. Cutting through the head pin there, leaving the 3-6. You want to cover both of these with the ball, ideally, and take a little bit off the shot going across the lane. Of course, Brian is only 15 years old, and we do affectionately call him the kid. Brian is an excellent, excellent spare shooter. Considering the revolutions that he gets on the ball uh, and his age factor is just tremendous the way he shoots spares. There's not too much wrong with his game, Jen. I, you know, he does a lot of things right. He, and if anything, he needs more of, and that might be bowling more tournaments and picking up a little more lane savvy, you know, you know, so he can make those adjustments a little quicker. But from a technique standpoint, his game is sound. Brian, of course, uh, has participated in the professional bowling camp. Uh, and he says since he's been there, it really has helped his game greatly. And, of course, in a few weeks, we will be showing you the junior bowlers who uh, will win a scholarship, one of the young men or women, uh, to go to these camps, which uh, is just really a great opportunity. That's about an $800 uh, school, I'm told. There you're looking at the pin that he left wobbling. Of course, Brian goes to Anderson High School. Yeah, too bad Tommy isn't here. Uh -huh. Covers it easily going across the lane. Brian Himmler opens the show with two spares. You can be sure all of his Anderson High School sophomore uh, student bodies watching him today. I'm sure they're very proud of Brian. I wonder if he's had any uh, offers in the last couple of weeks from the uh, ladies out in that area. What do you think, Jen? <laughs> I don't know. It's a little dough in his pocket. Yeah, now that he's rolling in dough, you never know. He's not a good enough guy, looking guy without it, but there's a lot of power on this place. There sure is. Power it is, and Dwayne really did not get the maximum advantage. Watch it here on the replay. The ball's going to cut through sharply. He throws a great shot, playing right around that 13th board. Very little swing, but super roll. Watch it here. Just totally drive right, right through, leaving the 9-pin on what could have been uh, a devastating strike. Jim. He really throws a powerful ball. That good forward roll. Throws it nice and hard. And of course that is reflective of why he left that nine pin. Well, we've got uh, some stuff coming up again. We'd like to uh, urge all of you to get your entries in. You send it to the same address that you do the golden ball. And that's for uh, some rhino bowling balls that we're going to be giving away uh, on the youth program and then also the ladies so if you want to get registered for a shot at a free bowling ball a rhino ball supplied by the four pro shops that sponsor the show and brunswick send them cards into summit and we'll get you listed there as we watch Dwayne go wide and leave the very difficult to bring back two eight ten jen it's one of yeah. your favorites i'm sure dangers of that big wide sweeping hook coming in behind the head pin head pin goes to the left doesn't get the 2 or the 8, and of course the 10 stands. Picks up the 2 and the 8, a uh, reasonable thing to do when pin count may be a factor. Dwayne not happy with his performance there, but uh, he'll be back online again, I'm sure. But Ryan Himmler, you don't want to open up against this guy. Look out. <laughs> There you go, the light mixer, the, the twister will obviously carry that hit more so than a down and in flare, but uh, Brian Himmler is just, just too awesome sometimes with that ball. Be uh, eager to watch him grow up around this area, hopefully it doesn't move away. So uh, all of you at home can watch him grow up too on the lanes and 
And I'd like to note that back by popular demand, Walt Sweeney's brought back that $20,000 Thunderbird. Of course, we won't give away this game, but we're going to be looking on to the next. Super shot by Brian. Oh, he liked it. Watch the reaction on this, too. The ball is going to absolutely destroy the pocket. It's going to be a little tight, but that big power takes a head pin straight back. Two pin goes to the wall, carries out the four. Does he like it? Sure he does. on the right lane, lane 10 is going to have to find his target and get lined up and stay there because Brian Hamler could take it out. Great shot there, Jeff. I think this match is going to go right down to the 10th frame. I don't know about you, but they it's, both look pretty lined up. You're right. It comes, it comes down to carry. And um, in all the weeks that we've been doing the telecast and as good as our numbers have been, it seems like the person that can get a break, a key break, and carry those marginal shots as we look at the score sheet. Right now you're looking at about a 23 pin advantage for Brian Himmler. 23 pins up this early in the match for that awesome a ball. It's going to be tough to overcome unless he continues to strike. Almost left it again. Mm -hmm. It looks like he's throwing the ball a little harder on the left lane for some reason. Maybe he thinks that left lane is hooking a little bit more and he needs to, needs to get the speed control down. Consistently, guys and girls at home, you want to go for consistency. No matter what you do, you want to do it every time the same way. And that way you can make adjustments. No problem with the spare. Do I understand we're going to have a St. Patty's Day parade later on this so afternoon? You betcha, so stay tuned on the station that brings you sports in Cincinnati. also brings you parades. We're going to be down there, Jen, you and I, I think, huh? Yeah. Waving to you from the, from the limo. and We're not allowed to throw out bowling balls this year, I'm told, <laughs> you know, because of last year's thing. But Brian Hamler comes up on the shot early. Cuts no parade right for him. <laughs> <laughs> no parade here, but he's still going to maintain the lead. Absolutely. Bad pin count on a double, though. Five count does not help. The four, six, seven, nine, ten. He'll shoot cross lane for the three, and hopefully one of them will bounce out of the ditch. If and anybody could do it with a powerful ball, I guess it'd probably be Brian. Yes. He'll opt for three, and of course on a strike, he's uh, glad he did get three because that'll actually count six. So he's looking at the score sheet, figuring things up. And as we look at the score sheet and figure it up also, he still carries through a four-pin lead. There you see it. Even with a strike, Dwayne is going to be four pins down. There you go. That's the ball. The churning action of the big release. Let's watch it here. Just absolutely straps the ball, rips the bottom out of it. One three pocket is annihilated. Ten in the pit, every pin doing its job, Jen. Perfect. Brian is rolling. There's Lee Sabatelli of Durban Bowl, also East Bowl. I understand you made a visit down there, some buddies' ears in Batesville, huh? Yeah, I tell you what, those boys at East Bowl know how to uh, get down, let's say. <laughs> Billy and Bob down there and the rest of you crazy people. It was sure it was sure good fun coming to Batesville. Next time I'll bring my equipment down and roll a few. As we promote all of you to do, get out to your local BPA fun center and let the good times roll. Take your kids, take grandma, take everybody. That's right. Pile them into the car and go. Going high, right straight through the heart, but covering the three, six, nine, ten, exactly as it's supposed to be made, Jen. He's just doing some excellent spare shooting. Eight pins. He is down. Brian has the strike working. Potentially it could be 18 pins, but uh, as long as you keep it around that eight pin area, you've got a chance to win. Now let's see if Dwayne, who has gone light the last two frames on lane number nine, let's see what adjustment he makes here. Yep. A little more Great. direct. Instead of going hard and swinging the ball, he went hard and threw it straight up at him. Let's pick it up here. This ball will not go outside of the eighth board. And it's for there you are. Eighth board, and then it makes the roll back, annihilates the pocket. Powerful striking ball. Wayne Hatton, left lane, is still in the match. Almost leaving the 2-8-10. Yep. Putting... 
just completely lost his footing that time, Jen. It looks like he got to the line ahead of the ball, reared up, and tried to get something on the ball. But when you're standing straight up at the line, it's just impossible to put that turn and that hook and revolution on the ball. Looking at Brian Himmler's mom and dad right behind them, looking on Kathy and Brian. I'm sure they're very proud of Brian. Got a lot to be proud of. Look out. Not happy about that. Nor should he be. Exactly. Now, Dwayne is, is kind of licking his chops back there. He knows that it's time to get back in this match. Brian Himmler opens the door for him. And he is playing again. There you see it. 102 to 109. That's seven, but the open frame could easily jump up there to the double-digit leads for Dwayne. Have you ever seen Vengeance. a player... Oh, have you ever seen a player just so totally maxed out at the foul line? Never, John? never. John Gant may be the closest thing I've ever seen to Brian. John Gant, maybe a Mark Roth, you know, just yeah. somebody that explodes at the point of release with every ounce of energy he has. Pete Weber, he's... Pete Weber's right another one, that's right. But they're not 15 either. It's just <laughs> phenomenal. <laughs> exactly. Dwayne Hatton, right lane, could really put the hammer on. Brian Hiller with a strike here. Big shot. Big shot in the eighth frame. He knows he can put it on him. Let's watch it here on the replay. He trusts this ball, but he also just... He himself imparts a little bruising to those finger grips. Just smashes. That's the head pin going to the left wall. Does a whirly bird into the seven. Takes out the... Four and the seven. Dwayne's in the driver's seat right now, and if he continues to strike, he'll bring home a winner. Getting his thoughts together here a little bit. Dwayne was 21 years old. He's a telecommunicator in Cincinnati. And he's a striker, oh, he's, too. He's got a move of his own right there. I tell you what, I thought he'd be pretty calm and collected, but he actually uh, started moving this one out. There you go. He straps it, does he? Yeah, he catches all of it right around the nice eighth board. Now watch the move. Ball's filled up the pocket. He loves it. And he ran it out. Brian Himmler in a critical frame with a strike working in the eighth frame. Just misses with that big, powerful ball. Not striking. He says, I don't know what I have to do. The machine, he knocked the pin far enough off spot that the machine knock the pin down, Jen. So we're going to have a slight delay here as we get our pin back in place. We're looking the area of 30 pins advantage with frames running out for Brian Himmler. No question about it. As we're down for just a few minutes, though, we can take a minute to thank you for uh, Terry Flynn from the Inquirer for reinstating our city all-star team. Right, that great section extra in the Inquirer sports part of it. Yeah, he, I read uh, that every week, Terry. It's a good art. You write good, good articles, and we're really happy to see bowling back in the newspaper. Right. We uh, we invite you down to uh, to one of our shows too, Terry. If you'd like to come down and give the folks a little behind the scenes kind of stuff. Of course, you got to get up a little early, but that's okay. Ohio Festival is also coming up, Jen. We're uh, we're going to be competing in that, I believe. That's it's right. It's an inaugural sport, and you can qualify in your uh, local divisions. And there's Walt Sweeney, who's brought us the $20,000 Thunderbird. West yeah. Hills Ford on Glenway Avenue. Yeah, Walt does a good job. Well, the guy in the back must not have hurt him. Well, he wanted the four pin, he put up the six. Must have thought it was a left-hander up. There's Jerry Bettinghouse from Pinhouse and Eastgate and all those fine betting house establishments. Of course, they have a, a St. Paddy's Day um, tournament out there at Pinhouse, I do believe. Well, that's okay. We'll go give it a try. And here at Holly Lanes, they have a KFP tournament coming up, singles, doubles, and team, and that'll start on March 5th, and it'll run through the 19th, and you can come and join that on Saturdays and Sundays. Let's we'll see if the delay had any effect on the <gasps> Well, he didn't waste any time. He jumps up there and knocks her down. But there for a minute, it looked like it was going to stay wide. Brian Himmler only has one thing that he can do here, and that's strike out in the 10th uh, frame. And if he does so, he'll be in the 190s. But uh, already his competition, Dwayne Hatton, will all he'll have to do is mark in the 10th frame. 
Brian Hamler needs a strike here and in the 11th frame for any chance to win. Mm. Yeah, that party's over. Sometimes they just don't want to fall and you really need them. Yep. Back to that KFP tournament. Um, it is a handicap tournament for men and women. And KFP stands for King of Fifius. Oh. Well, sure. I, I didn't think I was going to try that one. I knew that. <laughs> Fifius? They also have a great Scotch doubles tournament here. It's a nine pin no tap. Men and women bowl together. And this runs once a month. And you can call out here at Holly Lane's and get information from Wayne Piles, who does a great job out here at Holly Lane's. Just trying to get off the lanes. Brian Himmler uh, gets a round of applause, but he's not happy with his performance here today. Dwayne Hatton will go on to meet the next challenger in game number Which two. Will be Nick Vogelsang, who uh, we saw last week had qualified with 770. Well, this week from Holly Lanes, he had a 780. 780. <laughs> Shake it off. We are just being treated week after week to some marvelous bowling in the qualifiers as well as on the show. Brian Himmler won the early bird squad prize this week on Saturday. Got $50. Uh, for coming out here early in the morning. And they shot 7.06 on that shift. Uh, Dwayne with uh, nine or better will be in the 200 area against Brian Himmler's 174. And uh, again, not, not representative of Brian's talents, that's for sure. But when things go bad, we watched it last week for Kerry Logan, things really have a tendency to to fall through and Dwayne Hatton will go on to match number two and stay tuned don't go away we've got our golden ball contest coming up 